Okay, we need to keep in mind before starting that everything we're talking about this week applies only to DC railroads. If you attempted to do this on a DCC railroad or an AC railroad, well, it just simply wouldn't work. But there are plenty of people out there who are still modeling strictly in two rail DC. Now, last Tuesday, we talked about powering frogs and using the powered frog uh, for selective control of an area where you can use the position of the points to control where uh, DC power is going to run beyond the switch. And we mentioned that you need to have a single pole double throw switch somewhere integrated into your throwing mechanism in order to power the frog. This week we're going to be substituting this switch with a double pole double throw switch because we need to be able to reverse the polarity on the rails. And we talked about that many weeks ago, how you use a double pole double throw switch to change directions in a reversing loop or on your main line. So the, the electrical switch we're talking about, instead of controlling the voltage to the frog, will be controlling the polarity on the main line. It will be that switch to the left called main line switch, and that will be controlled by the switch machine. We also mentioned that the tortoise switch machine has a built-in double pole, double throw switch, and you can see the connections here for both the switch motor and the double pole, double throw switch. I will say that a stall motor type of switch machine, like a tortoise, is harder to use in this situation if you're planning to do full automation at some point. If at some point you want to completely automate this, I think it's easier to use the old school solenoid type of switch machines. That's just a, a hookup issue and we will be talking about that in a future video. For now, let's just understand that when you throw the points at the turnout that controls the reversing loop, that also needs to reverse the polarity of the main line. Okay, let's go back to talking about diodes. Now, the reason that I changed subjects from reversing loops to diodes a few weeks ago is we need to understand how diodes work in order to proceed with how we're going to be using our reversing loop today. We're going to be integrating a bridge rectifier into our reversing loop. If you remember from a few weeks ago, when we talked about diodes, we mentioned that diodes can be used to construct a bridge rectifier. What bridge rectifiers are normally used for is converting AC into DC. But if we think about that in a different way, it's simply saying that any polarity applied to the AC side of the uh, bridge rectifier will create a DC current at the output side that always has the same polarity. You can buy these things on Amazon. That's what it looks like. And you see, you can see they're not terribly expensive. You just need to make sure it can handle the current that you're using on your railroad. This sucker is a thousand volt 50 amp. So you're not going to burn that up. If you're uh, doing garden railroading and you're using LGB track, you can buy little track sections that have the diode bridge built in, as well as a gap for the other end of the loop. But you can see you're going to pay $80 to $90 for this setup, so it ain't cheap. So let's take a look at how this setup works. Instead of running AC into the AC input on the bridge rectifier, we're going to connect that to our track current. And what that means is no matter how the voltage is aligned on the main line, plus to minus, the output of the bridge rectifier will always be in the same direction, meaning that any train inside the reversing loop will always travel in the same direction, irrespective of how the direction switch on the power supply is set. Therefore, the polarity here on the main line is set. So any train entering the reversing loop here from the tangent direction will simply travel into the reversing loop without an issue. However, when the train is leaving the reversing loop as it arrives here at the turnout, well, it's going to uh, have an issue. We're going to have a short circuit here. However, if we do nothing more than throw the reversing switch on the power supply, 
that will align the polarity of the main line to the reversing loop. And because of the diode rectifier, it will have no impact on the polarity of the reversing loop. So if the points at the turnout and the direction switch on the main line are in sync with each other, a train will travel into the reversing loop from the tangent direction and exit from the divergent route without an issue. So as we mentioned earlier, we can connect a double pole, double throw switch to that particular turnout and have that double pole, double throw switch control in the polarity of our entire main line, then our reversing loop has become semi-automated by simply aligning the points here at the turnout to the appropriate direction, our train will go through the loop and back out uh, without any issues. So you can probably see that there are two big uh, drawbacks to this system. The trains always have to go through the reversing loop in the same direction, meaning that the points always have to be aligned to take the train into the uh, reversing loop from that side and then aligned to the exit as the trains are leaving the reversing loop. So you're not going to be able to have any sidings or switching of any kind inside the reversing loop since you'll have no way to change the direction of a train inside the reversing loop. Now the much larger problem is once you align the points to allow that train to exit the reversing loop, you've changed the polarity of your entire main line and therefore any trains operating on your main line are going to suddenly change direction. So it's really more of a system for running single trains on a single track. It is possible to run multiple trains on a DC only railroad. It's done all the time. It involves something called block wiring, but that's a subject for a future video. Anyway, now that we've established the fact that we're running a single train on a single track, What's going to happen when the train gets to the other end of this main line? We need to also turn around and come back the other way. And again, since I've said this works best with the uh, single track dog bone layout, what we're going to have at the other end of the railroad is the exact same thing, only reversed. So this does raise a question. If the switch machine is going to control the polarity of the main line, and this one has to be exactly like the other one. How can we control the polarity of the main line from two different switch machines? Well, what we do is we tie the two switch machines together so that if you change the position of the points on one of them, you're changing the position of the points on both of them. So now you have a rather simple system where there's one switch that you can sort of think of as a direction switch for your main line. And knowing that when the train arrives at the reversing loop at either end, that the points will be properly aligned, the train will proceed into the loop and through the loop, and all you have to do is throw the direction switch to the opposite direction before the train exits the loop. And this will align the points uh, to allow you to exit the loop as well as reversing the power on the main line so you can proceed out of that loop onto the main line and up the other direction without thinking about any of that stuff. And when you arrive at the other end, you simply do the same thing. As soon as the train is completely inside the loop, throw that switch to the opposite direction and the train will proceed out of that loop and off in the other direction. And now you should also see how simple it's going to be to automate this so that you can have continuous running on a single, trap, a single track dog bone railroad. So next week we're going to look at how this functions in practice and then move on to how easy it is to automate this so that you can have a fully automated single track mainline uh, double dog bone reversing thing deal. Yeah, I, one of those. Uh, feel free to spend the week confused and we'll try to clarify all the confusion next week. In the meantime, it's time to move on. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, 
please subscribe. Doesn't hurt, doesn't cost anything, but it helps grow the channel and it helps grow train videos in general because it lets Google know that people like this kind of thing. Right anyway, so hit the like button, and if you're not a okay. subscriber, you can easily subscribe with the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and Karen and I will see you on Sunday with a fun story. See you then. Bye-bye.